If you're looking to keep all of your projects and tasks organized for you and your team, I'm gonna show you how to do all of that using Microsoft planners and projects. So let's jump in. Now, one of the great things about Microsoft Planner is it's integrated with all of your other Microsoft tools like Office and Teams and things like that. So you just wanna head over to office.com to get into your Microsoft 365 account. And I'll even put a link in the description so you just click on that and head right over there. And once you're signed into your account, you're gonna to come to a screen like this. And all you wanna do is in the search bar, just search for Planner. It should be the first thing that pops up. You click on that. It'll take you to the home page here. And then we just want to click on try it for free. It's going to get us started on the one, one month free trial. You can always upgrade from there. So you just want to add your email account, click next, and we're going to set up a new account and you just need to enter in your information here and then click next. It's going to guide you through creating a username and then we're just going to add a password and we click next. And then it's going to have you enter in your payment information so that once your trial runs out, it will then charge you for the account. All right. And then once it sets up the account, it'll take you to a page like this. And you just want to click on get started. Then it's going to ask you to sign into your account. And then once you sign into your account, it'll bring you to your dashboard that looks like this. Now, because this is a brand new account that we just created, I don't see any recent plans that pop up in here because I haven't created any yet. But if this was an existing account, you would see some of your plans here. Now, if you have been added to somebody else's account, you would see those in this next tab over that says shared with me. And those would be the plans that somebody else, another team member in your company or, or whoever invited you to, those, to the planner would show up in here. So we're just going to go up here and start a new plan. Now, you got a couple options. You could do a blank plan. You can do a roadmap, you can import a project as a plan, or they have a bunch of different templates depending on what you are trying to create here. So you can explore these templates if you want to start with one of those. We're just going to create a blank plan to show you all the steps to, to make this. So it's going to create this project here for you. And once that loads, you'll see up here, it just says Untitled Plan. So we're going to name this. And this is, you want to name this what this project is all about. So, so in my example, I'm going to call this the Product Launch. And by default, it has today as the start date. And you can have a finish date. And it has some customizable options here. So you have the start date. We're going to go down here. We're just going to leave this as starting today. And then this will change depending on how long the project goes on. We're going to use the default work calendar. We're going to leave all this the same here. Okay. And then we're going to close out of that. And then you've got a couple of different views here. This is just sort of a list view of all the tasks that are coming up, which is good once you have that sort of populated. But to construct and sort of build out this plan, we're going to go over to the board view. Now, if you're familiar with like Trello or Monday.com, Asana, this might look a little familiar to you. And you have different buckets here. Now, buckets, you want to think of those as collections of tasks. Now, you can structure this any way you want. A lot of times I will use the buckets as sort of phases that the project will be going into so I can see these tasks as they move through the different phases. You could also use the buckets as sort of the departments that are working on there. Maybe you want the finance department to have their own bucket and the, the marketing department to have their own bucket. Depending on your project will dictate how you want to set that up. But in our case, we're going to do this as phases. So in a project launch, we're going to have one phase be research. Then we're going to add a new bucket for development. We're going to add another testing. And the net last bucket is launch. Now you can always add more buckets in there and, and as you go through there, but these are just enough to kind of get us started. Now what you can do at this point is you want to head over to your group members because the, the power of Planner is being able to share it across your team and across your organization so that you can share tasks and kind of oversee and manage what everybody else is, is doing in there. So when you click on that, you've got a couple of different options here is you can have the product launch group, right? And 
when you select that, you can add a description, and then you have a couple of different privacy options. So private means that only people that you invite to that group can be a part of that and engage with it. Public would be anybody in your organization or with a shared email extension can be able to find that project and access it. Most of the time, I find that I want the group to be private, and then I will invite the people that I want into that group to work on that project. Now, there may be situations in your organization or your, your company where you may want a public group where it's just sort of a general task uh, planner so that you can just send general tasks to everybody. But in most cases, the way that I use this at least is to be able to create individual projects for individual goals, and I have specific members that I want to work on that. So I'm going to leave that as private. And then down here, you can add any names or emails of people that you want to add to that group, okay? So we're just going to click on create there. So we have that set. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start populating with this with some tasks. What I like to do is when I first create a plan, I like to start populating some tasks within each of the buckets as I know that we will need to do those. You can always add more, and certainly as a project goes on, more tasks will become evident, right? So you can see right below the bucket here in research, we're going to add a task, and we're just going to call this and then you just click enter and it'll add the task. And so I'll just go through and create a couple of tasks real quick. And then, then I always fine tune them once I have that. So let's say we need to brainstorm ideas. Okay, just some general tasks that go in there. Now, once you have created a handful of these tasks, you just wanna click on that. And now you can add additional information. So you can assign it to a specific person right now I'm the only member of this group, but if I had other members, other team members that I would add in there, you would see them populate there. So I'm just going to assign this to myself. You can also create labels, which help you kind of search for and find different tasks if you want. Uh, I typically am not using that. And then you have start and finish dates. Again, most of the time I'm not using start dates, but I do like to add finish dates even if I need to move those later, I like to add those just so that I can see sort of a, a timeline approach of what's happening. So for this brainstorm ideas, I'm going to say I want to assign that for a week from now. And so then it automatically changes what that duration is. It has where the bucket is, the priority. You can change this to go, this is urgent, important, medium, low, right? You can add that. So we just keep drilling down even further into more detail. So brainstorming ideas is part of the research bucket, but within brainstorming ideas, I can now create a checklist within that, which are sort of like subtasks of that brainstorming idea. So, and you can see what I've done is now just created some kind of detailed checklist within that that is owned by me for brainstorming ideas. So I need to make sure that I schedule the meeting with the team, send out the parameters of what sort of ideas we're brainstorming, book the conference room, secure whiteboard, all those sort of things. And you can add those in there so that you now have sort of a, a checklist of, of things that need to happen in order to accomplish the brainstorming ideas. So then over here, we can add dependencies. And so if you click on this, this is meaning that this task is dependent upon another task getting finished or another task is dependent upon this getting finished. So I'm going to search for search for inspiration. So this is now dependent upon that other task. We need to finish the search for inspiration in order to start this one. And then we can also add a dependency into look into competition. We'll create that. So now what this is saying is that this must be finished in order to start search for inspiration, right? So once we brainstorm the ideas, then we will be able to start the inspiration. And again, this comes into play when you have team members that are waiting on a task to be finished or they're waiting for something to be done in order for them to be able to start theirs. They will see that their task is locked until that is finished. Then you can add attachments if there's any documents. So like these parameters that I need to send out, once I've created that, I can add that as an attachment so that everybody that sees this task will be able to access that information and then conversations. So you can have conversations about that or say, hey, I need that material to do that. 
and add those in there that way. So we're going to close out that. And you can see now that I've created some of those dependencies, these are now have a start date in there. Then you click on this and you can add, sign that to me. Maybe this one's also me. And you can assign those tasks. So you continue to sort of build out all of these different processes. And once we finish that, let's say we finish search for inspiration, we click that off. And now you see that comes down into the completion date. Maybe we want the look into competition. We just click and drag that over the development phase. And now we can track that through that way. Now you can see when we go over to the timeline view, you can kind of see how this will list out all the tasks that you have done. And at this point, it's not as much concerned about the buckets that it's in, but more that timeline. So you can see the brainstorming ideas that's due out here a week from today. And that is done. You can see this line here is showing that dependency. So we needed to complete that in order for that to be finished. And so this is a great view to kind of see where things are on track. You could see if, let's say, we slide this to before. Just for example's sake, let's say look into competition was supposed to happen last week. Now you can see I'm looking at this for today. This is complete, but this one is not complete. And now I know, okay, I need to go into this. We can click on that task. We can open the details and I can see, oh, this is red. It's marked as it's late. We'll go into the priorities and we'll go, this is urgent. So now in my case myself, but whoever is that task assigned to, they know I got to get this done. This was supposed to be done on the 10th and that time has passed. Now, if we go over to the charts view, this is, again, another snapshot of seeing all those same tasks, but you can now see the status. We can go, one is complete, one is not yet started, and one is late, okay? So now I can, again, see that we have a, a task in development that's late, and that needs to be tracked. So like most things, red is bad, green is good, right? So this bar across the top here is really all those same tasks, the same projects, the same plan, but just organized in different ways. So then if we head over to the people tab, this will show me all the members of the team that are part of that group and what tasks they have assigned to them. In my case, I only have myself in the team, but you can now move those tasks around. So maybe I don't have time to look at competition, so I'm going to assign that to a number, another member of my team very easily from this view. Now, what I like to use this tab for is I like to see the tasks that are not assigned to anybody. So if I come in here, just for example's sake, we'll just bring, drag that over there, and I open this up and I go, oh, I don't have anybody that's looking into competition. So naturally, that's not going to get done if it's not assigned to somebody. So I need to take that and go, I'll take that on and make sure that that's done. And then you also have goals. So you could add goals here that are sort of milestones along the project. So maybe this is hit our quarterly numbers, right? And you could say, I want to have that hit by the end of the month. And then you can add tasks according to that so that you can keep things on track. Rather than just with due dates, you can look at the overall goal and be like, we're on track, we're not on track. Now, if we go back to home, we have a couple of different plans here. Let's say, just for example sake, we had another plan and we're going to call this prepare taxes. And we're going to have this due on the 27th. And we're going to create that. I'm just going to add a new task in here and I'm gonna assign this to myself there, okay? Now, when we go back into here, we can see that I have three different projects here that I'm a member of, right? You can see other plans that people have created that are shared with you. So now you can see all the projects that are in here. You can see all the ones that are created by me. And then if you click on the assigned to me, it's gonna take you to this page here, which is the planner page. And you can see this gives me all of my tasks listed across all the different projects that we created, the due dates, the urgency, what's been started, not started, completed, the status of them, all listed out here, whether it's something that I created for myself, something a team member created for me, and you can see it all within there. We can also go to a board view, 
which shows you now the process listed out this way, not started, what's in progress and what's complete. And then you can go over here to my plans and it has, again, all of these plans that are listed out as needed, okay? All the same tasks, all the same projects, all the same plans, just viewed through different lenses. And it really helps to keep things organized depending on what you're trying to track and what you're trying to look at. And everything's linked together so that if I complete a task in here, now that I've done that, I can go back to my projects and I can go back to the project launch. And now I see that look into competition is now complete. So with that, you are up and running with keeping everything organized between your projects and your planner, all within Microsoft. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you in the next one.